And our next speaker is, uh, is um, um, Kunwen Lee. I hope I pronounce this right. He's a rising senior at Yale NUS College in Singapore and an ex Teradis uh, intern. And he is interested in functional programming and operating systems. And as such, he will give us a um, talk uh, in how to use Riot with uh, Mirage OS, which is a library operating system built in OCaml. Hello, um, thank you for the introduction and the opportunity to share. I've had a lot of fun uh, yesterday attending the talks and meeting the community. So thank you so much for the organizers for making this uh, happen. So, but before I begin, uh, I'd like to give a bit of background on myself. Uh, my name is Kunwen and I am pursuing a bachelor's degree in computer science um, at Yale and US um, in Singapore. Uh, and my first experience with programming uh, was with OCaml and it has been my go-to ever since. And later onwards, I took an interest in um, uh, uh, programming languages and operating systems. And that has, um, is the reason why I ended up uh, interning at Taridesk earlier this year. So Taridesk is a international software company based in Paris and also with offices in India as well as in the UK. Um, at Taridesk, their primary focus is to uh, grow the OCaml programming language as well as the community around it. They are also one of the biggest contributors uh, as to the compiler as well as maintaining quite a number of the open source libraries um, are supporting the language. In addition to all of that, they also provide training services to organizations um, interested in using the language and incorporating it into their own software. So now coming back to uh, how all of this relates to Riot. So during my internship at Taridesk, I had the opportunity to build on previous work um, by Ben, Lucas, and Magnus, who are still individuals at the company. Uh, and their work involved uh, experimenting to see if we could port OCaml onto Riot. And eventually this culminated in uh, us building a sort of hybrid operating system uh, that runs OCaml libraries uh, under the name of Mirage uh, on top of Riot. And today we like to share with everybody um, how we did that and perhaps a new way and context that we think uh, Riot could be used in. So, but first, what is OCaml and why would I be interested in using it to build my Riot applications? And the story goes uh, like this. Uh, modern kernels today are all written in C and as is the case with Riot, and this is for good reason, C excels at writing low-level programs, uh, such as device drivers that are hand-tuned for space and uh, efficiency. However, C is not quite the language that we want to be using to express our high-level logic in. And the reason for that is uh, because C lacks the abstraction facilities of high-level languages and also requires um, a lot of manual tracking in terms of uh, uh, resources such as memory buffers. So on the other hand, we have OCaml, which is a high-level functional programming language that has descended from the ML style of languages. Some of the features of OCaml are its strong static type system, which is incredibly useful for catching bugs uh, by rejecting unsafe code at uh, compile time rather than at runtime. OCaml also features a garbage collector, which, is, uh, which deals with the memory management for us and makes the uh, development process a whole lot less laborious. And the last thing that I'll mention, which is also probably the most important thing for this talk, is that uh, OCaml takes modularity very seriously. In OCaml, we write modules that uh, express interfaces that tell us how to uh, in, uh, interact with the module. The ability to do this uh, also allows us to abstract away the underlying details and then allows software to scale. And lastly, the composability of modules gives us this powerful and um, nifty feature of being able to swap out the underlying components um, just as long as they uh, support the same interface. So now that I've hopefully given you some um, um, reason to consider using OCaml for your next project, uh, it is now uh, convenient for me to introduce uh, to you Mirage. So Mirage OS is a library operating system written in OCaml 
and uh, was initially created to challenge the design of traditional operating systems. And the main critique here being that traditional operating systems require us to build our applications on top of this un huge underlying piece of software, which is the operating system itself. And these multi-user, multi-application uh, operating systems uh, carry along with it a ton of drivers and services that most of the time our applications don't really use. So instead of having to trust all of this uh, software not to have bugs, what Mirage does instead is to build these things called unikernels, which are custom uh, operating systems that only have the operating system services required by your application. And so to illustrate the differences between unikernels and traditional operating systems, consider a typical application uh, in architecture. We would generally have a server that runs some stock operating system. On top of that, we would build our application running in user space. And for the application to access the underlying hardware, uh, it makes system calls, uh, which are handled by the operating system in kernel mode. And essentially what happens now is we have kind of a back and forth between uh, the application and the operating system, um, just as the user space and kernel space. So conversely, uh, unikernels uh, gets rid of this idea that the kernel and the user space are separate components. Uh, unikernels are single address space binaries that are uh, uh, constructed by compiling the application logic along with the operating system services. So uh, what were syscalls in traditional operating systems are now library functions, uh, library function calls in unikernels. And here we have a diagram here to show how the Mirage compiler takes the operating system services along with the program code and compiles them down into a singular binary. And as you might be, might be able to imagine, uh, we have a speed up for our application because uh, now we don't have to perform context switching. And more surprisingly, we actually have a security benefit uh, by the virtue that our unit kernels now only have a small subset of operating system services and thereby less attack vectors. Yeah, so for a more diagrammatic view of how we build uh, unit kernels, here we have the Mirage compiler that takes the program code uh, along with the, uh, the OCaml libraries that encode uh, operating system services, and we term these the Mirage libraries. Uh, it takes the two together and compiles them down into a standalone executable that can now run on top of your target uh, hardware. Uh, and now we say that the operating system has been specialized for your application. At the moment, the current status of Mirage is that we uh, have supporting drivers for Zen, KVM, and the Unix backends. But with the growing trend towards the Internet of Things and embedded devices becoming more and more powerful and capable of handling more complex logic, it now uh, became a good idea, or the core maintainers thought that it would be a good idea to start supporting um, uh, IoT devices as uh, target platforms. Unfortunately, this is easier said than done, given the number of microcontroller architectures out there on the market today. Um, writing drivers for all of them would be a huge investment. And this is where uh, Riot swoops into save the day. And the question that we asked ourselves was, what if we could port uh, OCaml and Mirage uh, libraries onto Riot? Since the majority of uh, Mirage libraries are platform agnostic, in theory, uh, we would just need to find a suitable point that we could shim in a translation layer in between Riot's AP, uh, uh, APIs and Mirage libraries. And if we can do that, we would have a new unikernel structure that would feature Riot as the base layer and have the upper layers uh, made, up of, made up of Mirage libraries and OCaml. And this connection would then enable a whole new set of compilation targets for Mirage. Okay, so that was kind of the high level understanding of what we're gonna do. But in actuality, it was a little bit more complicated than that. I glossed over a number of things that we need to do uh, before we can think about uh, interfacing Mirage and Riot. And first and foremostly, forget Mirage. Uh, how do we even get OCaml to run on Riot? The good thing is that OCaml has pretty good 
support for um, interfacing with C, we are able to quite easily expose C functions in OCaml, which means that equivalently, we could uh, call uh, write C APIs in OCaml. But this assumes that we already have the Riot kernel built, exposing the APIs that uh, we want to translate into OCaml. So the bigger, bigger problem now is, is, uh, is how exactly are we going to get, uh, how are we going to orchestrate building the Riot kernel and its dependencies? And the way that we get around doing that instead is to completely avoid doing it. Instead, we have the Riot build system building our OCaml program. And we can do this because the OCaml compiler allows us to generate the OCaml runtime along with the program's bytecode uh, in C, which means that but now by passing these two artifacts to Riot, we can essentially build um, the uh, OCaml on top of Riot. So with that base infrastru infrastructure set up, in order to plug in the Mirage libraries, we just need to figure out the set of Riot APIs that we want to, uh, that we require in OCaml to implement the interface uh, of the target Mirage library. And this is what we tried to do. Uh, we tried to build a non-trivial example of this by implementing a HTTP server. So to describe our, to describe our network architecture, this uh, diagram on the right here shows how uh, Mirage composes libraries uh, to build unikernels uh, requiring HTTP. From the top, uh, you can see uh, we have the platforms, uh, Zen and Unix in blue and in orange, uh, composing over Mirage libraries in green. By the same principle, our, uh, we envisioned that Riot would become one of these base uh, components that we could compose Mirage libraries over. For our experiments, we had the NRF 52840 MDK board on hand, uh, which is one of the spotted uh, built, uh, supported platforms of Riot. And for our networking components, we decided to utilize uh, Riot's GNRC stack. And to interface with uh, Mirage, we targeted the Mirage IP layer library and wrote the interface for that. And, just be uh, and because we were using the Riot's build system to build our OCaml program, uh, all we have to do is to specify the board that we want to build for, and then we can call make. All that's it, during development, since Riot allows us to build uh, our code natively, our stack looks something like this instead, where we would compile for our native backend using the uh, TunTap interface to simulate the network card. And you can also notice that the six low pan translation layer has also been not included because it is not, built, uh, it is not pulled in by default uh, when running natively. And same as before, um, we just need to specify that we want to build natively and then we can uh, call make. So, and there you have it. Uh, we have kind of a working bridge uh, between uh, Riot's GNRC stack as well as the Mirage libraries and assembling the stack according to the development architecture that we saw earlier. We actually implement a uh, simple echo server written in OCaml and built by Riot. So I have a little demonstration for that. It is not as ambitious as um, Benjamin's one where he actually did it live, but we will try our best. So here I am in the application directory and, uh, sorry, in the main directory and I've called make to build the, um, uh, yeah, uh, the right application. And then subsequently I call make term which uh, initiates the, uh, right, the OCaml runtime where it's running a echo server. And now we can make calls to the uh, server. We can send them requests and we see that the response is, uh, we get the response by the server. Yeah. Okay, so we've done all of this work, but I've actually sneakily avoided the real question, which is, does it actually run on the embedded device? As you might imagine, the OCaml runtime isn't exactly uh, lightweight and requires a bit of memory. So here are the co constraints of the chip that we were targeting. Uh, it has one megabyte of flash and 256 kilobytes of RAM. 
And when we try to compile against the board, we get a memory error. Um, we have an overflow of about 300 kilobytes in read-only memory and about one megabyte of overflow in RAM. And as expected, the uh, OCaml runtime is the culprit with, although the text section is quite small, uh, the data section is whopping one megabyte. So what do we do about this? Well, we could try to perform some optimizations. Uh, we did some uh, did code elimination. Uh, and it turns out that the runtime contains, uh, because the runtime contains quite a lot of functions in the, uh, from the OCaml standard library that aren't really used in the program. So we can make use of the OCaml clean tool, which is the runtime uh, um, decode elimination tool and remove the redundant code. And after that, it's better, but we still can't fit uh, our runtime on RAM. So we've managed to decrease the memory by about 400 kilobytes, but that's not anywhere close to fitting in, in our constraints. So what else can we do? We noticed that in fact, our flash memory is underutilized. We only use three kilobytes. So what we can try to do is to move the runtime code into the text section. And it turns out that this is a good idea because most of the runtime data is bytecode instructions uh, that are encoded in a large, large array and they don't get mutated. And voila, we have managed to move things around such that the text section now holds most of the information which can be stored on flash. Uh, and the data section doesn't cause an overflow. Yeah, and the entire program binary, including the uh, uh, RIAS library code uh, is now 850 kilobytes of read-only memory and 80 kilobytes of, uh, for the data and the BSS section for RAM. So in theory, this should now work, but it fails at runtime. And the output that you see here is from the chip We've managed to successfully flash the program onto the device and it loads the right threads. But as soon as we start the old camel runtime, we get the memory uh, out of memory. And after some investigation by profiling the heap, it looks like there's too much memory allocation happening during runtime, which causes our out of memory error. We peak at about 340 kilobytes and that means that the heap allocation itself is overshooting RAM, the RAM provided. And not to mention that we still have about 80 kilobytes of stack data, which we uh, must give some leeway to grow. So in total, we have about 440 kilobytes of RAM usage. So this is not good news. And potentially what we could do is to look into the internals of the Mirage library and see if we could reduce the allocation. But unfortunately, I didn't have time to, do, uh, to, to work on this. But looking at the bright side, I did take the liberty to check out uh, other available chips. And I found that under the same NRF52 series, uh, Nordic Semiconductor's flagship uh, NRF5340 has a combined total of uh, 1.25 uh, megabytes of flash and 576 kilobytes of uh, RAM, uh, which based on our profiling is sufficient to fit our network stack. And from the way um, technology is advancing, we might be able to expect uh, more memory on our embedded chips in the future. And this is where I will conclude for today. Here are some opportunities for further work. Uh, Tarides is looking for interns to continue advancing the project by improving the memory uh, usage and experimenting with different networking protocols. And of course, some acknowledgements for the Riot and Mirage project. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, are there any questions in the room? <laughs> for the future, or are they just waiting for the next intern who is uh, <laughs> doing? I mean, um, I believe you... that. Um, I believe that the work going into this uh, has to do with figuring out which is the best, uh, uh, which is the best place to uh, add in the uh, interface layer. Because right now we added in the, uh, the, the interface layer at the IP, the network layer, uh, which means that a lot of uh, the right 
which means that we had to utilize a lot of Mirage libraries on the top. Uh, and alternatively, what we could do is to take advantage of Riot's TCP abstraction and go even further up, and that will reduce the amount of allocation that's performed at runtime by OCAM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, is there any, are there any resources, I mean, in terms of people who want to do this uh, in either at Taradis or uh, from your side? Um, yes, I believe that uh, these opportunities are, well, yeah, meant for the next intern, but when we came here to present this, we were hoping that we could get some of the right uh, community interested in seeing that uh, or supporting OCaml on top of uh, right, and that might be able to help us with our memory uh, constraint issues. Any additional documentation about this and uh, except the slides? I mean, oh yes, um, in my GitHub repository, I have yeah. um, documented uh, my work, and it should be um, easy to follow, hopefully. <laughs> There might be a contention though. Okay, a bit goes similar to what I was asking, but uh, are you planning to contribute the parts that are required for Riot to Riot or? I think it is not yet, uh, because this was mostly a test of concept, a proof of concept. Uh, it is not really production ready to go into Riot, so I wouldn't expect. Well, uh, we had this discussion in the morning in the breakout session that maybe contributing early might help to clean up some problems with a proof of concept. So maybe we could help you there, so. Yes, yeah. I will definitely uh, consider that. Yeah. Um, we would we would uh, just look maybe. more heavily into. <laughs> yes. um, uh, oh yeah, from the chat first. Yes, yeah. Emma. Uh, the um, OCaml is always compiling to a uh, runtime plus the bytecode. Am I am I understanding you right, or is it ever compiling to a uh, native to native code that is uh, platform specific? Yes, um, there is two options. You can either uh, decide to run it, uh, to compile it to bytecode, or you can uh, optionally compile it natively as well. Okay. The okay. next question: Did you test to to compile it to native? Um, no, we didn't. I didn't try to compile it natively. I believe that the previous work that was done on it uh, tried to compile it natively, but uh, there were some issues, I believe, with the uh, with the uh, with the fact that we couldn't have we didn't have the correct uh, make flags that Rye provides. Okay. Okay. Next question for Manu. Thanks for the for the talk. Um, just. One comment first, uh, if you have some concrete uh, job offers, like please post them on the forum. Oh yes, <laughs> I totally um, like glossed over it, but um, over on the Tardis website, we have uh, some uh, opportunities that is really down on, uh, is concrete yeah, so there. Would, and yeah. sorry, yeah. Yeah, just relay them on the, on the forum. Right? Yes. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, what I was a little bit missing in, the, in, the, in, the, in your talk is like, What's your vision with this? Like uh, uh, in the ideal world, like, let's say you can bring down the memory a little bit, uh, or or you know change the uh, where you where you plug in um, OCaml world. Like what, what? How do you see? How? What's your vision going with this? Like uh, what, what would people code in OCaml? Like how would let's say that the, the riot below would evolve uh, in terms of service it could provide to mm. to the to the this OCaml layer like what, what's your vision so i think that the direction that we are going for is because um OCaml as a high level function in programming languages a language uh, enables uh is part of the class of safe uh, languages and if we are able to start moving towards um having these safe languages um, um <clears throat> be, uh, be used for our system programming we could eliminate quite a lot of um, uh, memory overflows, uh, buffer overflows um, uh, that are caused by, um, I guess we would say, uh, poor oversight on the part of the developer. Yeah. Okay, any further questions? Let's see, I just got an maybe from the chat. Okay, um, maybe, oh, then. Uh, ah, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, what alternatives are there to the use of OCaml? Um, 
Bei Hannes. Nein. I don't think that uh, I have the answer for that in terms of what other options are there available than OCaml. Um, I think that the reason why we've gone down this pathway is that uh, because of the availability of Mirage OS, which is uh, a set of a number of operating system libraries um, that are available today. And which is why we think that plugging them together would number one, allow us to have a lot of more compilation targets for Mirage, but at the same time also provide a lot of uh, libraries on top of um, Riot. Um, and maybe in the uh, same direction is um, why OCaml and not Rust or F star? Um, uh, there are many safe languages, but the question is, what should we use? <laughs> yes. So I think in terms of the language argument, it's a little bit difficult for me to um, con give a very convincing argument other than uh, you can try it out yourself and you might like it. But again, here, um, the main draw for me and what I think um, would help, uh, be most beneficial for Riot is the fact that we already have Mirage uh, available today. That uh, might not be the case for Rust and F-Sharp, but I am not very sure if that's the case. And lastly, a comment from Christian before I go back to the room, um, is the make flags that Riot provides are now easily uh, to obtain through compile commands.json. So maybe you can have a look into that. Mm -hmm. Uh, then uh, Simon first. Uh, I think regarding the language question we had before, the it, the Mirage OS thing made the impression for me that it's it's, bas it's basically like some kind of building blocks to do some things like microservices, or at least this is, seems to be the intention from my point of view and if you if you move that mindset into iot space you basically come something really similar basically distributed systems mm -hmm. so i guess the sister platform it seems an interesting approach uh, although quite unusual i guess yes so uh, maybe it supports your argument why uh, mirage might be a good fit there if there was next yep uh, just one more point on this mm -hmm. entire lecture. Test, test, test. Yeah. Okay, uh, just one this entire language debate. Uh, you mentioned in the beginning that uh, OCaml is, of course, garbage. Yeah. Hello. That's a uh, major advantage of REST, for example, that it doesn't require garbage collection. Do you have uh, any details on how the uh, OCaml garbage collector works? Is it like reference counting? Because I can imagine in an embedded environment, we sometimes want to satisfy real-time guarantees, for example, that it can be very annoying if suddenly the garbage collector jumps in and just starts uh, freeing memory in terms of like, yeah, satisfying real-time guarantees. Yes. Um, I Unfortunately, I don't have a very, very clear idea. But from what I know, the, the garbage collector in OCaml is a mark and sweep. Uh, collector and um, it does so in two phases which uh, ensures that we don't hog up all of the uh, resource time uh, the um, time split okay um, then another comment from Hannes the problem is the following if everyone use wants to use their own safe language then we will not get anywhere since writing an entire artos takes forever so <laughs> maybe that's a comment for that thank you for your comment um, it <laughs> Like I said, it is a little bit difficult for me to uh, give you a very strong uh, uh, argument or reason to use OCaml other than uh, that uh, we think that there is value there. Um, uh, yeah, and we would encourage you to try it out and see if um, that uh, you might take an interest in that way. Okay, then another question from Ben, and I guess then we have to uh, go to the next talk. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, uh, maybe I missed it, are the, are the bindings to the Riot API generated automatically or is that a manual process? Uh, it is a manual process. So um, that means that to support different um, Riot APIs, we would need to look into how we would write the wrappers over them. Okay, um, then thank you for your talk.